Good afternoon. My name is Enrico Vink. I'm the Managing Director of FIDIC and I'm here with Vincent de Loop in London at the FIDIC Users Conference. And we've been reflecting on a lot of the changes to the FIDIC rainbow suite of contracts. But perhaps less well known is that we've also been working on a suite of agreements, three new documents that FIDIC is bringing out. Is it just coincidental that we're also developing three new agreements to come out with three new works contracts? Well, not really, Enrico. Actually, uh, we are uh, developing this new suite of agreements uh, in line with uh, the development of the new forms of works contracts. So basically what we uh, have uh, ensured through this new suite of agreements is to provide for harmonization of the wording and uh, also harmonization of the concepts behind typically um, the entity acting as the engineer, either as a legal entity or the natural person uh, acting for the engineer. So we have uh, indeed uh, wished to update uh, the suite of agreements in conjunction with uh, the update of the works contracts. Because I notice there's always a lot of discussion about the, the role of the engineer to the contract Yep. his independence, what is the relationship with the employer and of course through these documents, these agreements, we can actually specify in more detail that relationship. Yes, yes indeed, it's always a very vivid subject and a very topical subject because in the works contract, in the date of the yellow book, you have seen that uh, uh, we have this uh, requirement for the engineer to act neutrally uh, when he's making determinations. As we had before, the engineer is still um, uh, under the requirement to certify amounts which are fairly due to the contractor on right. a monthly basis, right. if, there is, if there are monthly installments. And um, there is also this requirement to make fair determination. So we have just reflected that matter uh, also in a specific uh, subclause of the white book, which is now called uh, uh, Construction Administration, right. subclause 3.9, right. and where the engineer is act uh, whenever he's exercising discretion in the the works contract or whenever it's certifying mm. or making a determination is required to act fairly uh, as in between the, the employer and the contractor um, and also exercising his independent professional judgment. Right. So we made sure somehow that right. uh, what we ask for the engineer to do uh, in a white book, typically in a, a client consultant relationship, uh, reflects what uh, the engineer is asked to do uh, under the red book, yellow book uh, contract. But with the, the sub consultancy agreement, perhaps something less known to the market, FIDIC yeah. took some time to develop a sub contract to match the red book, mm. and now we have a sub-consultancy agreement. Is that designed to perform a similar function back-to-back -back with the main contract? Yes, definitely. Uh, that's why it's, it, goes, it goes out together, and we have also the GV agreement going <laughs> together. So typically, the sub-consultancy agreement mm. will be there for those uh, acting as engineer uh, mm. under a works contract, for instance, having their engineer services being contracted with the client using a white mm. book. Uh, but being willing to subcontract some parts of the services. It might well be that you are talking about uh, a large water treatment plant, for instance, where you have the engineer delivering most of the services, but he might be willing to subcontract some specific services, such as automation or electro-mechanical uh, design. He can do so using the subconsultancy agreement. There are back-to-back -back, uh, provisions with the white book, but also the subconsultancy agreement has an ad additional feature, which means that it can be used uh, whenever the main agreement is not the white book. So uh, we have made sure that there is this flexibility for the so construction in industry to be able in to use... a lot use of markets uh, where they're not familiar with the white book, but they could use these independently. Exactly, yeah. So you yeah. could well be in a situation where the uh, main consultancy agreement is not the white book, but still you would use a subconsultancy agreement just uh, because we have not uh, developed a mutatis mutandis approach in between the, the main consultancy services agreement and the subconsultancy services agreement. So that basically the obligations of the white book uh, consultant are reflected again in the the subconsultancy form. Okay, so we can show that we are focusing a lot more on the role of the consulting engineer and the new ways of working together, particularly in this global market, so we can also match the work going on with the main forms of contract. Yes, definitely. We yeah. wanted to further stress that uh, uh, we ask the engineer uh, basically mm. to be uh, acting fairly uh, as in between the parties. Mm. But something for which we got um, a strong feedback from the industry to further emphasize this fairness which is expected in between the parties. 
all in line with dispute prevention mechanism because we at FIDIC level support the view that mm -hmm. uh, it's much better to deal fairly with any claim situation coming up rather than trying to keep it away for later on yeah. because we all know that it only ends up in protracted disputes. Well, that sounds like a perfect invitation for our audience out there to come and <laughs> visit the next conference and learn more about it. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye.